Hey, 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 welcome to another Money Today. Back on the Oasis Rose Train. Just a quick update. You know, <laughs> this channel could easily become the Oasis uh, protocol channel. So I'm trying not to do that. Uh, there's so many other great projects to look at, but with the insane amount of connections that I found from Oasis, it's hard not to just keep doing more videos on it. And when I first started doing this particular video, I was looking into the connections between Oasis and US government, etc. And really, this kind of ballooned out into a way bigger thought, right? Because what we're looking at with um, a mind map here, and uh, we've talked about before the connection Oasis uh, blockchain fund to Excel Partners, which is, of course, Jim Breyer. And I know I could confuse a lot of people um, because there's just so much. But if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you realize that Jim Breyer basically created or helped create all of the infrastructure for China, all the digital infrastructure, Tencent, Xiaomi, uh, Baidu, etc. So we've got that connection. Now, Jim Breyer was working on AI big time in China and with the U.S. government. So all this rhetoric that we hear in the past, oh, you know, China's working on AI and the U.S. needs to catch up or vice versa or whatever. I've always thought is just a bunch of horseshit because it doesn't make any sense when you've got the same person working with both governments on AI. I wanted to remind us of that because then when we talk about Don Song and Don Song's connection to both, uh, you know, Chinese, uh, because she is Chinese and, you know, came from Tsinghua University and now is working hand in hand with uh, U.S. government to build AI, that you might think that's kind of strange. I mean, why would China let its best and brightest come over here and help the United States work on their AI? It wouldn't make any sense if there was an actual competition there. But there seems to be, and, and especially because you note that with Oasis, they are very connected to China and the Chinese uh, government, but then also to the U.S. <laughs> and U.S. institutions like the National Science Foundations and DARPA, etc. And let's get into that. So I'll show you what we're talking about. And if you haven't seen my other videos on Oasis and you're interested in Oasis Rose, I think it would be pretty smart for you to do so. I think most of you have. And I think a good article, and I can't believe I'm going to say that about the New York Times, to see where Oasis is going and where Don Song is headed here is this article. And I'm going to leave it in the description. Now, I don't believe the New York Times any more than I believe Wikipedia. But there are some things that are pretty plain and, you know, uh, they seem to be uh, no real political bent on this. So I, I think it actually is pretty useful. And the title of the article is Building a World Where Data Privacy Exists Online. And as you can see here, uh, Professor Song grew up in Dalian, China, ended up at Tsinghua University, and then over here at Cornell. And the next thing you know, she is starting a company, Oasis Labs. And as the article is saying here, most people give away their data. And now there's a way for you to own your own data and give it away or <laughs> and sell it. And here we get into our first part of it, which is Keystone, Keystone Enclave. Professor Song's work group is working on enhancing the security of these zones by adding an open source security enclave, Keystone. So this is an open source. We present Keystone, the first open source framework for building customized trusted execution environments. And if you go down to the, and you see, of course, uh, Don Song here. And if you go down to the bottom of this article, who funded it? 
This material is in part based on work supported by the National Science Foundation and DARPA. So that is the Defense Department, for those of you that don't know, and the same place that created the Internet itself. (laughs) But funny enough, who else? Amazon Web Services, Adept Labs, Intel, HP, Huawei, NVIDIA, and SK Hynix. A lot of uh, Linux Foundation members here. Of course, you've got the open source. Again, seems to be a very east-west thing going on here, but it's, I think this is really important for us to follow. Keystone is, is going to be important. Oasis Labs has been building a platform to support enterprises and developers. They have begun to pilot with Nebula Genomics, a direct-to-consumer gene sequencing company. Well, what is that? And if you get into Nebula Genomics, you find George Church, the founder of Nebula Genomics. And he has so many deep ties to U.S. government research, uh, funding by U.S. government. I I mean, we could just go on and on about that. You feel free to look up George Church. I think you'll find that pretty interesting. There's currently little incentive for consumers to contribute their DNA and health information to third-party database. And basically, this is a way to get that done. The pitch to the average person is that you're not just monetizing your genetic data. We're also going to provide you with insights similar to what 23andMe and Ancestry.com do. And here are the many rewards you have from DARPA and whatnot with George Church. Another application called CARA, a collaboration with Dr. Robert Chang at Stanford, gives eye patients the option to share retina scans and other medical data with researchers who use the data to train machine learning models to recognize disease. So what is CARA? A decentralized health data cloud which puts patients' privacy first. So you're beginning to see a theme here. AI, privacy, yada, yada. You see Oasis Labs here, Don Song, Clement Fung, and ETH Zurich. So now we've got somewhere else uh, involved, and that just happens to be founded by the Swiss federal government. So if you are looking for a coin that has connections to pretty much governments around the world, Oasis seems to be the one. But I don't want to paint Don Song in any sort of weird way. Uh, I think this is a human being. And uh, I, you know, when you put a voice to her name and everything, I I think that's important. So I'm going to send this off with a little bit of uh, interview with Don Song. And uh, I want to hear what you have to think. I definitely do own Rose Oasis and... uh, I'm going to continue to keep looking at this. All right. See you in the next one. Love y'all. By the way. Yes. Uh, with a duck tiger. So actually, with the both Ed Clark and duck tiger. So I also started early on looking at essentially how to, because security, as I mentioned, so security is a field that you need to think about how to defend against this really smart attacker. But one of the best ways to do that, now doing it as cat and mouse game is to have certain formal proofs of security properties of a computer system. And so I actually started very early on looking at how we can use uh, formal verification techniques to help us to provide formal proofs for security properties of protocols and systems and so on. So it's very much uh, intersection of aspects of security by looking at how we can bring more formal foundations and guarantees to the security systems.